This video is powerful on several levels. Seven. Damn. This video is powerful on several different levels. But there's one more thing that this man forgot to add. Or he might have added it. I cut the video a little short. Black empowerment. Now, a lot of races, even though I just said a couple days ago there's only one race, the human race, a lot of groups of people, since we've been divided so long ago, we call it the races. We're only one race. So this group of people that this man happened to be speaking on does not empower itself. Let me repeat myself. The quote unquote black community does not black community. Black community does not empower itself. In other words, instead of going down to this store, you go to the one that's owned by the black man. Instead of going to this shopping center, go to the one that has the stores that you know, catered to black people. Um, this has been done by several different races of people. There's only one race to human race. There's only one race to human race. I keep on going back to that. But um, in most of the communities around America, the Hispanics go to Hispanic stores. You see what I'm saying? Us blacks, we go to Safeway, Long's Drug Store. We go to any store we can get to. But, for the most part, in the Hispanic community, most Hispanics go to Hispanic stores. You don't see these white folks going to the Hispanic store. Not that much. You don't see black people go to Hispanic stores. Not that much, but I do, because I'm not stupid. I go to where the meat is freshest sometimes. I go to where the prices are better, because you can go get steaks and chickens and shit from the Hispanic store cheaper than you can Safeway and all these other places. Um, you know, a lot of people say that stuff is shipped in from Mexico. That's what they say. So, um, even with the Japanese and Asian, how many um, black folks you see working at these Chinese restaurants? You don't. You see Hispanics working at Chinese restaurants now. You look at the big picture you got to get in where you fit in. And like the man said in his video, you know, you can't depend on uh, Wheezy and, and, and Daddy to help you out. You can't depend on uh, Jay-Z and Puff Daddy to tell you how to get your money on. You can't depend on those guys because they got theirs. They doing they thing. They thing. You got to do your thing, man. Get in where you fit in. And uh, I like how this man is telling you to go out there and get a job. I need a job. I need that kicking ass every now and then. Somebody telling me to go out and get a job. Somebody telling me to go out and do something. Do something for yourself. That's why I started trying to develop this website and all this and that shit. So I can get paid off the internet. I can get paid off doing what I do. I can put my music out on the internet. Um, there's places where you can put 10 of your instrumentals on a CD and sell it for 20 bucks. People buy that shit sitting around making these beats and shit and calling yourself a rapper and shit and ain't nobody ever fucking heard you. Anybody heard you? Nobody heard of you. Only people that think you sound good is your family and friends. Expand out. Those people who send you a week are mad because they can't do what you do. So you, so if you think you can shoot the basketball and shit, try to get on the and one tour because you're not going to the NBA. See what I'm saying? You understand what I'm talking about? Like this man said, get out and do what you can do. My cousin, uh, about four or five years ago, he started his own janitorial company. All his old buddies was laughing, talking about, you cleaning toilets, man, for $40 a night, da, 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 laughing and joking. Now he's paying somebody else $125 a night to clean toilets. You understand what I'm saying? How can this man, not too long ago, everybody laughing for cleaning toilets, now he can pay somebody else three times as much as he was getting paid to clean toilets? See, and he's a minister. He does. He, he put it down. I can't do that. I'm not him. I don't have the the what's the word the gumption to move like he do. So I'm a little slower. I'm a little older, but I'm a little slower than he is. But the moral of the story is this, brothers and sisters and young people. If you don't go out and make a life for yourself now, you won't have a life. Nobody's going to go out and make a life for you. Don't nobody owe you nothing. You know what I mean? And a lot of young black people think people owe them something. What you got on my 40? 
movies and the media have made black people so stupefied and dumb, it's pitiful. Because the average black person can quote you any kind of damn song or something out of a movie. He can't quote you no Shakespeare. Can't quote you no fuck. <laughs> can't quote you shit. If it ain't got to do no basketball, football, hip hop. The average African American household is probably being run by someone no older than 35 years old. And you know what that means. If this 35 year old man or woman is in charge and they haven't seen anything positive in their life, then there's just a bunch of kids living in a house waiting for that 35 year old to make sure the bills are paid. The moral of the story is this. If you don't get out by the time you're 16, maybe 15 now, and create a life for yourself, a positive, cash-earning life, you will fail in this country. You will not only fail on every front, you will fail in every conceivable way. You will fall subject to media. Man, you can sell dope and come up, man. You can sell dope. That shit don't work. What's going to happen? You sell dope, you got some money, and wait, what's it? It's not legal. You can't buy nothing with it. You gonna buy a car, another car. It's kind of funny how how these brothers buy cars with their dope money. I got a car. There's this one guy who allegedly put his own album out with his dope money. Then he took his dope money and went to the record stores and bought up all his albums. Then he, he reboxed those albums, put them back in the record store, took his dope money, and bought those albums. Once his record sales went up so high, a major label picked him up, gave him a shitload of money. Now he don't have to sell dope no more. Now he ain't even rapping no more. He ain't even singing no more. So use that, use that model. As fucked up as that model is, that worked. The man does not have to sell dope no more. The man don't have to do shit no more. Because he had a plan and he stuck to it. He didn't buy 15 cars. He didn't buy bullshit. He got smart enough to put a record out and smart enough to buy it. Smart enough to repackage some shit that he paid for, that he paid for in the first place. You get the numbers up, people notice you. Now, how do you think our country got in this economic crisis? Because they fucked with the numbers. And in the end, you're just a number. And when it's time for them to fuck with you, they will. They will mess with you if you're not worth anything. And you can look around your neighborhood now after I just said that. And look down the street. How many people hanging outside right now is worth anything? They don't even own that corner they stand on. They are addicted to drugs just like the people that are buying the drugs from them. And let me tell you about that too. When you sell dope, you gotta buy dope. When you can't get your dope, you can't sell no dope. You trip. You trip out. Damn. I gotta get that package. You go to calling everybody you know just like a dope fan. So, addiction is funny. Don't get hooked on wanting something. You go make sure you can get it and keep it. Because whatever you buy with dirty money, they can take. And no matter how much dirty money you throw at a clean lawyer, they can still take your money. So believe this. Go get an education and don't stop getting educated. Keep that brain running 24-7. Because if you don't keep your brain running 24-7, the next three or four years, your legs and your feet going to be running 24-7. Thank you. And you've been tubed.